Hi, and welcome to the Tomato Timer, a podcast about learning to learn. I'm Zubair from Xenos, and I'm tuning in live with experts from around the world, asking your questions and hearing their stories. All before the timer goes off. 24 minutes and 39 seconds to go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 19 of the Tomato Timer. And joining us today is Holly Keane. Holly is a te- digital and technological solutions degree apprentice at BT. And she is working towards a BSc in London while doing an apprenticeship. And it's really interesting because uh, Holly's working on the enterprise unit and she's interacting with lots of interesting customers like BBC and the BT media companies. So Holly, it's great to have you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. How's lockdown treating you? Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I'm working from home. I don't actually get to be in the office at the moment. So <laughs> very fun, something new. Yeah, it's definitely been interesting. Um, I think after a couple of weeks now, though, it's 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 bordering on listlessness and not really knowing what date and time it is. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Every day feels like the same day. <laughs> <laughs> so, Holly, could you tell us a little bit about what you are working on right now? Of course. So I'm currently a contract manager um, at BT Media and Broadcast. So I'm a apprentice and I'm working in that team. What we do is we rotate every six months. So I'm currently in that rotation Mm -hmm. and I'm working on specifically something called change controls. So I'm working on that with the BBC, which is really interesting because I've never been involved in contract management before. So yeah, it's something new for me. That sounds really cool. Could you, uh, I know there are some bits that are probably a bit more confidential because you're working with media and stuff, but what what does that exactly mean, managing contracts? Is it working with customers or or actually kind of like media organizations? Yeah, definitely. So um, at BT Media and Broadcast, we serve more than uh, 500 media companies. So obviously we have lots of different contracts with ITV, BBC, and Mm. um, it's such a huge customer that's actually put on a managed contract. So we have a whole team that works on it, which is really exciting. Ooh, that's really, really cool. Okay. And so how did you get into all of this, like the apprenticeship and technology in general? So I've always been quite um, tech savvy. I've always been interested in uh, technology. And what I did is I went to sixth form and I studied geography, business and IT. So I don't have a media background at all, although I really did want to study it. But my school, it wasn't on their syllabus. Mm. So um, when I found out about BT Media and Broadcast, um, I just decided to apply. I applied to some different unis, got some offers back. But with IT, I just think you get the best experience from an apprenticeship because it's so fast evolving. If you're in a workplace that's to do with technology, you're constantly learning. So, yeah, I just thought it was the best suited path for me. Um, I've been working pretty much part time since I was 16. So I worked wow. as a party host, which was quite interesting. So I have that kind of background of working with customers. So getting to now work with these top end customers is I think it's really exciting. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Because unfortunately for some of us not living in the UK and being from abroad, we don't usually have the opportunity to do interns or even kind of part-time jobs where we live or what, where, what's our kind of opportunities available to us. So how did that feel working from such a young age and especially at a such a, I guess, customer facing job, right? Yeah, definitely. So it was very daunting at first um I think that's definitely what mapped out Mm. kind of building up my confidence I think because I was definitely very shy at school I really didn't want to stand up and present um didn't really want to put my hand up if I didn't have to um and I I guess it was kind of it was really daunting when I first even had my first interview for for any job but yeah just being in that kind of environment of having to deal with customers having to deal with your colleagues and just kind of forcing you to communicate it really it was really beneficial I think Mm. do you ever did you ever make I'm sure you have lots of stories but was it ever like a tough time as well especially when you're working with you know customers who might not be the greatest they might not be as responsive or as happy with what you're doing probably not because of you but because of other reasons but they you know these kind of jobs tend to have a a lot of kind of psychological psychological impact as well so how did you deal with that 
Yeah, so I'd say especially in retail and leisure, you definitely have yeah. um, some interesting customers and some different times sometimes. Um, and it's such a fast paced environment as well. So that's definitely where you need to put those like decision making skills into practice and quick thinking on your feet. Yeah. Um, I'm, I know one day when I was at one of my jobs, I was literally running around um, to different places, back and forward to the stock room, just trying to get things up and working. But yeah, it was definitely interesting. And definitely like has built your kind of confidence, as you said. It's it's truly amazing when you're putting yourself out there time and time again in front of people. You you kind of have to lose all those kind of shy <laughs> features of yourself. Um, yeah, Ollie, definitely. tell us a little bit about your school life. Um, you said that you studied geography, business, and ICT. Were you ever you you said and you said you kind of had a, a focus for tech as well? But what made you choose those A levels? Yeah, so um, I did at GCSE. I did pretty much similar. I did geography. I did business. I'd always enjoy business. Mm-hmm. I was just really interested in um, top companies. So it's really great that I get to work in one now. Yeah. <laughs> and geography was just kind of interesting for me as well. So I kind of took the mindset of just taking A-levels that were I was interested in. Um, and IT also was something that I liked. So yeah, I I mainly made sure that kind of did subjects that you enjoy as well so I kind of just discovered from all of those that in A level I really enjoyed ICT so ICT at my A level in my school was mainly coursework based oh interesting it gave us yeah it's really interesting there wasn't actually um an exam so it was coursework based and it was really interesting because we got to do quite a, a range of different topics so, yeah, I really enjoyed that at school. Wow. Um, because I think we had a question from our from our community asking about what you felt about the ICT syllabus at A-level, because unfortunately, in some exam boards, it's not always the very best. There's a lot of rote memorization. And I still remember it's it's been a while, but like when I did my GCSE or IGCSE at ICT, it was just like memorizing all those different inputs and outputs and yeah. <laughs> darn printers of different types. But it sounds really cool. What, what sort of coursework were you doing at the time? So it was it was a really good course because we went from things like hardware in the computer to web design. We did some database work. So it was a really broad syllabus and it kind of gave you an all round ICT knowledge. It was it wasn't as mm. um, when I went into BT, there's a whole lot more to learn, but it gave you the you gave, it gave you the really basic steps. So you had a little bit of a little bit of network background, a little bit of software background, and it also gave us some business um, background. So we kind of worked on mm. could actually link my business lessons to my IT lessons. So yeah, it was a really good course. I really enjoyed. It. That sounds really really good. So tell us a little bit about how that has transpired into your degree right now so you are studying as well as working and you're I guess you're yeah sure yeah tell us a little bit about that actually I don't need to add anymore yeah sure so um it is is I work um Monday to Friday nine to five and then we also go to university so we do still get a degree and we go to a uni called Ravensbourne in London it's by the O2 so yeah that's really exciting Mm -hmm. and a lot of people are ask yeah. me how you kind of balance the working and the learning but it's really good at BT because we always have a study day on a Friday and it's really good because your syllabus is linked to your work so there's always people and colleagues at work that can help you out and the same with the lecturers at university so we study um, mm-hmm. networking software business fundamentals and information systems so yeah it's a real variety yeah, and do do any of those things link back to your practical work as well, directly? Um, I'd probably say a little bit less for me because I'm more in the business enterprise side. So it's it is very te- technical based, but that is really important to get that technical knowledge, especially working for BT. Just to have that base technical background is really good because when I first joined there was a lot of technical jargon and I didn't really have any idea what all of these different words meant but yeah. now when you pick that up it's much easier to do your yeah. job. So you you told us that you were you know you also applied to university and had quite a few choices there as well and you still t- went down and took the apprenticeship route. Any thoughts any like kind of insights that you've gained along the way and 
would you would you do it differently any other way would you you know if, if you had an opportunity which way would you choose this time yeah so i actually applied to university through ucas um like quite a lot of people did yeah um I think the the reason that maybe sometimes people don't go for apprenticeships is because there's not one central base to apply for them like UCAS. So mm. on UCAS, you'll apply for all of your five um, unis and get all of your offers. Whereas with yeah. apprenticeships, you need to kind of decide what company you want to work for and look into the company. What, what do they deliver? There's so many different companies that do apprenticeships as well. And then you have to go through separate routes and interviews and assessment centers of all different the different companies so i think as well the unknown of an apprenticeship was quite interesting to me i just didn't know much about it so i kind of i just really wanted one okay that's so cool um and and i guess that is a challenge for many of us because you know we we like to choose a, a route which is kind of like easily carved out and mapped out for us right you know going to UCAS doing this it's been done yeah. for ages and ages um and it's gonna be probably be done the same way for a long time still um and apprenticeship isn't something that's as commonly known or as widely taken up as it used to be I, I remember in the past though it was a very uh regular thing I'm, I'm talking maybe like 20 30 maybe even 50 years ago um it was a it was a common idea that you could learn while working and you could and it, i guess in the past it was more around the ideas of having a mentor and having someone who was knowledgeable and would guide you in a certain career pathway yeah. so it's it's a really cool model i think um and it's unfortunate that not many people find out about it definitely there's always some really good websites i think there's a few called not going to uni and there's one called uni frog they're really good for kind of um apprenticeships are so broad these days they used to be mainly in trades like electricians but now you can get so many different types of apprenticeships i think you can even get some nursing apprenticeships so yeah wow. it's good that's really cool and we would definitely kind of find out those links from you and have it in the end of the episode to share with our our listeners um yeah so i guess now i want to learn more so you've you've got to through your apprentice you're, you're a year almost a year through your apprenticeship so i've been at bt for seven months now so i joined in october straight from six from so yeah okay Exciting. and what are some of those skills and insights that you've gained over this time so are there certain characteristics um, personally or technically that you've built up yeah definitely so i think one of them um is probably that a lot of like basic skills from school like decision making and organizing and things like that but one specifically is um, commercial thinking so it's really important to like um, understand and build up the knowledge of the business and the industry um, so it's been really exciting learning about how media and broadcast works and then also understanding the product and service that you provide so it's something completely different to the, those basic skills that you think you're going to use such as working and deadlines but you do really learn these more in-depth skills wow yeah and it, it is there's so much you can you find out when you're kind of on the job rather than learning about the theory behind it um and i guess the thing that we could say is like you know there's no syllabus for a job that you end up going to do it's like you just walk in and you you have some guidelines and some interesting people who can help you but you kind of have to make it up as you go as well, right? Yeah, definitely. When I first joined, it was brand new, but it was really nice. A lot of my colleagues set up things like overviews with me and went through loads of things about what the company was about. You pretty much learn something brand new every single day. It's great. Yeah, that is really, really cool. And so how is the coronavirus impacting your work right now? You've, you said that you're working from home, but um, is there any other aspect of your job that's been altered and that, what about yeah yes yeah, so, that's, that's pretty much it yeah so um with the bbc as i work on the infrastructure some uh -huh. of our engineers obviously uh, some people might not know some people might not might know but um we're connected to open reach so obviously we've got those key workers out there giving us connectivity holding together our broadband networks they're the people that are allowing us to facetime our mums facetimes our, our dads so they're yeah. really helping communication and that's more important than ever at the moment so i saw a really nice um wording they said um that 
open reach of working so you can fill your basket online and fill your fridge at home so that's just really yeah. putting into perspective that whilst we're all working at home they're actually out there um keeping up our connectivity so yeah it's really amazing yeah absolutely and i think we tend to forget how you know natural it is to just go on the internet and do something um i, I you know we are not uh at any moment, we have some sort of connectivity to speak to someone and get something. Um, and it's crazy, like, especially these times. I know around the UK, the the people who are doing online shopping these days, um, you know, even for the essential groceries, um, has just, like, <laughs> gone through the roof. Um, and, and all our, so many of our jobs are completely, mm-hmm. like, linked to meeting people. And so when we've pushed to, I don't know, Zoom calls and, and Google Meets, um, we, we we need our internet connection and yeah like there's a in the past there was a quite a lot of discussion about you know is internet a basic right basic human right and, and now more than ever the virus has shown us that absolutely you know not just our day-to-day living but our education everything is linked to having some sort of connectivity to to speak to the rest of the world yeah it's really nice as well um especially in media and broadcast and my team we try to keep that um kind of community between us so we have a lot of kind of virtual quizzes virtual coffee mornings so we all are still connected which is really lovely yeah yeah and what about your 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 degree so you you still would be studying if if this hadn't happened so how have you been managing that yeah so um funny enough last week i was actually at we've called it virtual uni so using um platforms to kind of do online lectures instead so it's it's weird because it's still the same um as being in uni we're still covering all of the same syllabus but it's completely different so we're now doing these tasks by ourselves we're having to kind of put questions in the chat window um so yeah it's really it's really different and uh, it's it's new a new way of working i guess the new normal (laughs) <laughs> the new normal absolutely um i wanted to know a little bit more about when you when you did join and was there ever any biases you felt due to your background or gender or anything like that at bt or or otherwise in any kind of industry that you've been interacting with yeah so when i first joined bt obviously um in a technology company there's a lot of things that say uh, women in tech but there's so many different types of genders at bt so they really push push for women in tech and women in engineering which is lovely um and also when you do join bt you're not expected to know everything you're an apprentice so they really invest time in training you up teaching you the systems and yeah it's just great that is really, really good and something that's so important nowadays to be have the inclusivity and diversity in everything we're working on. Um, yeah, so I guess we've, we've really heard a lot of interesting stuff from you today. Um, what would, you, would your kind of final piece of advice be to our listeners uh, today about whether it's from your work or from your experience or the, this kind of the pathway you've chosen in, in pursuing your career and your your degree as well yeah, definitely so first it would be um kind of getting some work experience so it doesn't matter where it is um just any type of work experience at all it would be really good to kind of get that that business thinking going so that that would be one of my top tips definitely reach out to people when we can <laughs> eventually and try and get work yeah. experience in different types of industries and um, kind of see which one's best suited to you and then also uh, for the people that are picking their options and deciding what they want to do when they do finish school definitely kind of thinking outside the box and whatever your friends are doing if you want to do the same, that's completely fine, but maybe just thinking about yourself as well. So kind of mapping your own pathway. So maybe if your friends are going off to uni, just ask yourself the question of why you are going to uni. Um, and just even have a look at apprenticeships because they are becoming a much more popular option. Yeah. Yeah, that's been such an insightful discussion. Thank you so much for joining us, Holly. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And thank you to all our live listeners. So that wraps up our episode on Tuesday and we will be back 
at the end of the week with another guest. Thank you. Bye. And that's another episode of the Tomato Timer. If you'd like to ask your questions and join us live next week, join the Xenos Discord server. The invite link is in the description. And to learn more about Xenos and how a bunch of students are on a mission of making quality education accessible to all, go to xenos.org. Bye for now.